Hey guys, welcome to my video. In this topic discussion, I'll be discussing talus of vascular necrosis. Talus of vascular necrosis is basically a damaged talus due to a lack of blood supply. And there is generally three ways that that could happen. One, from trauma, which comprises about 75% of the talus injury. And then the other one, a second is medications, including steroids and alcohol abuse. And third is idiopathic. And you could just be unlucky and you could just get it. So I, just, I read some articles and systematic review talking about Taylor's, Taylor advancement of necrosis and the treatment plan that goes along with it. So before I get started, let's talk about what talus is. Talus is a bone that is pivotal in the ankle joint. It, is, it has about six to seven articular surfaces, uh, depending on where you read, and basically makes contact with other bones, including tibia, calcaneus, and, and the vicular, and it is crucial to carry out that biomechanical um, motion when you're walking and it, it moves in three planes of motion. It is unique in that it moves in three planes of motion when you're walking, uh, unlike other joints where it's kind of like a mono or biplane motion. And because it is making so much contact with the other bones, the 60 to 70 percent of Taylor's surface is basically cartilage, meaning that it is that little uh, lubricated surface that allows motion to happen. But because of, it's so much of the surface is made up of cartilage, it does not have the luxurious blood supply like other bones have from three main sources, uh, muscle belly of the, of the bone, a muscle of the surrounding, uh, surrounding the bone, periosteum, or the nutrient artery. That's why talus is very prone to getting a vascular necrotic disease. So as you can see in the image over here, on the left hand side, you can see the T2 sagittal angle uh, image. You can see high and low intensity at the tailored body, uh, inferior to the tibia. And also, you can see some, see some sort of subchondral cysts occurring, consistent, consistent with tailored injury. On the right hand side, you can see a radial opacity at the tailored body where the arrow is pointed at, inferior to the tibia. Again, consistent with tailored uh, injury or in this case, tailored. Uh, Taylor uh, vascular necrosis. So the common classification that we use to describe Taylor vascular necrosis, at least for the Taylor neck, is Hawking classification, and is designed talk, uh, designed in around 1940 by Hawking in his article, and then initially only included three types. Type one is a vascular uh, fracture site. There is fracture at the talus, but there is no displacement, and the incidence of a vascular necrosis ranges from zero to about 13 percent. The, in the original Hawking article talked about there is zero percent of a vascular necrosis, at least in, the, in terms of the patient sample size. But other articles came about and said that there was about 10 percent or so. In type two, there is a fracture at the talus and the, it is dislocated at the subtalar joint, and the incidence of a vascular necrosis is 20 to 40 percent. Now they it jumped pretty substantially from type one because now it's two blood supply of the talus that is uh, interrupted, the dorsalis pedis and the medial and the lateral of the body, tailored body, uh, which is artery of the sign of tarsi and the tarsal canal. Type three, three arteries are basically interrupted, the remaining uh, blood supply, posterior tibial and the pro, uh, pro, peroneals, and basically the incidence of avascular necrosis is reaching 100% or 91% from the original Hawking article. Now, Connelly and Kelly came about and added a fourth stage where type two was dislocated at subtalar, type three is dislocated at tibial tail or the ankle joint, type four is dislocated at tailor navicular joint. And basically, the incidence of a vascular necrosis is similar to type three, basically virtually 100%. You're bound to get a vascular necrosis. Now, Hawking classification is technically for tailored neck. Uh, there's a different classification called Foucault and Arlet that initially was described femoral head and vascular necrosis. But however, Mont et al. came about and modified that classification to fit the ankle joint, specifically the talus. Type 1 is normal, type 2 is cystic, and some sort of osteoscleroid changes that like you've seen in the previous uh, radiograph. Type 3 is that sclerosing is substantial enough where there is a structural integrity damage, where there is a collapse of the talus. And type 4 is basically joint space narrowing and secondary um, just degenerative changes that you could see from an injured talus. So what are some of the ways that you could treat a tailored uh, vascular necrosis? Just like any other illnesses, you could, there is a conservative and a surgical option. 
or joint sparing or joint uh, sacrificing or salvaging. Uh, one of the conservative ways is basically non-weight bearing. Just like any other lower extremity problems, uh, just take off the load, see if the bone will heal it on its own. Some articles discuss how some of the patients will go non-weight bearing for nine months, which is extremely long time, which is insane. And despite that, the, the result is not even that good. Uh, some articles stated that one third of the conservative treat, treated patients end up surgically anyway. So it's kind of tricky how to treat Taylor avascular vascular necrosis. Some other ways of conservative treatment of treating uh, Taylor avascular necrosis is patella tendon bracing. Again, offloading that tailless ankle joint and kind of putting more pressure on that uh, knee where leaning on your knee kind of thing. Some other treatments include extracorporeal shockwave therapy. They're commonly used for plantar fasciitis and other kind of foot problems. It is basically acoustic shockwave therapy that kind of massages the area and reduces the edema. Uh, it's been noted that 77% of the patient that went through this procedure, uh, extra, con extracorporeal shockwave therapy, had about 50% reduced edema, which resulted in some sort of pain relief also. So it could work. And you could also do some grafting, obviously, like a, there's an article that talked about core depression, decompression, which is basically taking out the injured talus and putting in, in some graft. Or you could just do other graft, um, vascular or non-vascular bone graft. And there's been some studies showcasing some sort of improvements. But like I said, conservative treatments are always tried first because it's conservative, but oftentimes you may not work out. Then you move on to... Uh, basically joint sacrificing procedures like a fusion basically or a telectomy taking out the talus completely or taking um, and just fusing the area tibio tylo fusion subtalar joint fusion pantalar fusion which is basically the ankle joint and the uh, triple arthrodesis are included in that procedure uh, before we get there I forgot to talk about Taylor prothesis and it's basically um, 3D printing a talus for a patient and just putting it in. It's like, an, it's like any other implant. It could be a hip implant or a knee replacement, whatever. It's just an implant, another implant for a talus. Um, there's not much article talking about the Taylor prosthesis specifically because it is, very, it is still tricky how to do that completely. So there's not much study out there with large enough population, but it is still out there. All right, so let's talk about some sort of uh, fusion. So for, in terms of fusion, I want to talk about just one study here, Inter, intramedullary nail. They made an incision at the medial side and they put a retro um, IM nail for to fuse tibio talar calcaneal after they took out some of the necrotic bone of the talus. Uh, they put in a split for one to two weeks, six to seven weeks, uh, protected non weight bearing fiber class, a fiber, a fi fi fiberglass, and then some protected weight bearing six to seven more weeks. And so uh, they stated that the, the outcome was relatively good. Uh, 12 out of the 14 patients were able to fuse completely and two patients had a stable pseudoarthrodesis, meaning that the bone itself did not completely fuse, but the other soft tissue like fiber collagenous or just tissue around it kind of fused and was able to provide stable structure for a patient to kind of bear weight on it. So it's pretty good, it's one way to fuse it. Obviously, there's different ways to fuse it. You could just use internal hardware, external fixator, but fusion is basically a joint sacrificing procedure. Uh, next, I want to talk about a Blair procedure. This is also a fusion of the tibia and the talus. And in this case, the, the body was injured and basically they were fusing, figuring out a way how to fuse tibia and the talus. And one way they, did it, they can do it is using a Blair procedure. Blair came about this procedure and it's basically making an incision anterior lateral and making a one by two inch, uh, basically graft from the tibia, anterior tibial tuberosity, I guess, and sliding it down and making a hole in the tail and neck and putting it in that slot and basically fusing it without any fixation. They stated that, and you can see from the radiograph on the picture over here, it turned out pretty well. You can see the, there's the bone uh, callus form pretty nicely, basically it contours to that shape of the foot. And when they're doing this, you wanna make sure that the foot is in about 100 to 105 degree equinus to avoid that rock bottom foot deformity after post-operation. -op 
However, the Blair procedure was did not include any, any in, internal fixation, so some people thought, huh, maybe we could reduce the um, rate of failure if we provided some internal fixation. So their modified Blair procedure basically kind of strengthening that construct. Uh, you can see from the radiograph here, they included um, on the lateral, you could, you could see the anterior tibial plate going across the tibia and the talus, and also they did a intermedullary screw going from the tibia and the talus. They also kind of did a posterior, like almost like a coot, posterior calcaneal osteotomy, but well, something optional. A different way to kind of provide internal fixation. Temporarily, you could also use Steinman pin, or you can know it from the left side over here. And also, they also did like this little button uh, compression using a pediatric hip compression thing where they basically again provide internal fixation so the idea of a modified procedure is to provide internal fixation and compression for the for the initial Blair procedure which did not include that and the outcomes were pretty successful uh, they said that um, I don't quite remember but a lot of the patients just came about pretty good um, and then when you're using this internal compression, they're using about 6.5 millimeter castellus screw retrograde to basically provide that locking or the internal compression of the graft. So that's, that's a very brief overview of some of the treatments out there for talus of vascular necrosis. I hope you guys enjoyed this video uh, and then remember to, to stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching guys.